easier to, to understand what we are planning to do in the Assist IoT project. Okay, I will be, I am the coordinator of the project. The idea of this project is to provide, an, one of the objects is to provide an architecture uh, for scalable, self, asterisk, human-centric, intelligent, secure, and tactile next-generation IoT. So the idea is to build a structure for next-generation IoT and apply to different use cases, introducing innovative concepts in this, in this architecture. So the project has been funded or is being funded by the European Commission in the Horizon 2020 program, in the, I, in, the, in the ICT work program, and in the topic ICT 56. It's a RIA, it's a research and innovation action. It has been funded with other five projects and uh, a CSA that will be supporting the project. It started 1st November, more or less all the project started 1st started September, 1st October, 1st November. And uh, we have 15 partners of seven countries that later on I will be I will be presenting you. Uh, the, the the partners of the of the of the of the project, although later on I will go back to you, are these ones. We have partners from Finland, the Netherlands, France, Spain, uh, Poland, uh, Germany, and Greece. Uh, the idea behind Assist IoT is the following. Right now. Uh, the existing application that we may find, or the, or, although the, 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 advance and the advancement in IoT platforms has been experiencing a major boost in the last four or five years, right now do not benefit from many opportunities that we are having from having uh, multiple data sources, multiple, multiple streams of data, and mainly uh, this data uh, coming at uh, high speeds, coming from different formats, and so on. So, the idea behind uh, Assist IoT is to try to overcome the problems that we are having with centralized IoT architectures and try to introduce uh, long-term data processing, uh, trying to support uh, the new requirements that we may have from the application. Because traditionally, IoT applications, uh, IoT platform, IoT systems, IoT application were based in, uh, in, 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 in a standard requirement that have been used all around in different application domains, but, but right now we require novel approaches. We require decentralized ecosystem. We don't have to rely that everything will be done in the cloud. We may require to do things on the edge. Even we may require to do things even in the device. We may have to support security, privacy, and trust by design. And this has to be done during the design and deployment phase of, the, of all the platforms. And the most important thing that is uh, an aspect that has been uh, stressed by the Commission, but has been also stressed by the market, and this is one of the things that we want to know from you in this workshop, is the human centricity of the new IoT deployments. We need new ways of interac interacting with IoT ecosystems. It's no longer the application in which we were receiving data from a, a, a large amount of sensors deploying on the fields and, uh, and the human in the loop is deciding or some automatic process is deciding that some actuator is doing something on the field. We need the human, the, the human, the human in the middle. We need the human centricity of the next generation internet applied to next generation IoT. And this is what uh, Assist IoT is providing. We will be based on, on the necessity that we are having and we will creating new opportunities for new pro application and new devices. So the main goal is to provide a new architectural approach to next generation future, future IoT. And for this, we may need scalability and flexibility. We need to be agnostic to the different verticals because we are not going. This is something that was solved uh, in the past with IoT platforms, trying not to be uh, ver uh, to, to, to be deploying in silos, to be uh, depending on the verticals, but we need to stress this aspect. We need to allow to fl the flow of multiple uh, streams of, uh, of, of, of data from the humans and from the environment and try to benefit from artificial intelligence where we need it. Not only in the cloud saying, okay, the data is arriving to the cloud, there we are deciding different aspects, we have to, 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 to profit from the artificial intelligence in the edge and even in the device. So at the end of the day, we want to, to have IoT-based solution that will be smarter, more secure, trustable, and efficient in different aspects, as we will be seeing as we will be executing the project. So the idea is to profit 
from different embedded intelligence that we will be having in the edge, location based, different handling of data streams, uh, decentralized decision making, even in the different devices. Try to have transaction between different platforms because right now uh, it is understood and uh, we all have gone through this long way to understand that we want, what we need cross-platform semantically, uh, we need semantically enabled cross-platform, cross-domain transactions. So we need interoperability. So we need intelligence and security and privacy by design, as we will be seeing in the different pilots. And we need as much as possible network softwareization, because with the network softwareization, we will be able to understand uh, different aspects of the exchange of data and the interactions between the device and the gateways the gateways and the edge nodes, the edge nodes and the and the cloud. So uh, all of this will be uh, uh, the, the, the enabler, the supporting part of new ways of interacting with the data, with the sensor, with the actuators, with the platforms. And this will be provided by a tactile internet application. This will be the link with augmented reality, with virtual reality, with 5G, with mm, low latency networks that will be supporting the deployment of assist IoT and next generation IoT. So the idea between uh, assist IoT is we will have assist IoT, we will have the, the, the interaction and we will be moving to the different enablers that we will be having for the next generation IoT. So we will focus in different smart objectives, okay, objectives that will be measurable. So we we'll have different KPIs that some of them are related with, with exploitation, with the business, with the market. Okay, and these objectives we are the first one is the, what, as I have told you, is the, the basic the basic objective of the project that is providing a next generation IoT reference architecture. So new application, new deployment, new use cases can be uh, using this reference architecture. We will be defining different smart networking components based, based on, on SDM, based on, on 5G. We will have decentralized security and privacy based on distributed ledger technologies, and we will have uh, smart distributed artificial intelligence enablers uh, in the cloud, in the edge, and in the devices, and a lot of human-centric tools and interfaces. So uh, from now on, the human is the center of all the application. In the past, can be the stakeholder, can be the administrator that is in a, in a command and control center room, in order to manage everything. But now everything will be based in, in the human. So it will allow us to provide new innovative applications of IoT and will allow us to provide a new insight of interacting with IoT. So in Assist IoT, we'll be, we will be defining, deploying and evaluating three uh, real life pilots, three real life pilots with different scenarios that will be presented to you later on. And we will be establishing an innovative cooperation and business framework. And this is the first step in order to create this cooperation and you know, this uh, business framework and cooperation with the, 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 the ecosystem is this workshop that we are having with all of you. We will be having new, new, new workshops in order to present the insights and the results of the project. So for impact creation, Assist IoT will be showcased and we will try to disrupt a little bit in the, in the current market. So, the architecture will be multiplane, so we will be profiting on the last developments that have been performed in IoT, in IEEE, in I2T, in different, uh, let's say, uh, SDOs and also pre-normative environments, introducing different enablers that will be supporting the different concepts that will be proposed by Assist IoT. So we will have modularity, scalability, decentralization, human centricity, and interoperability in different aspects and in different layers. And we will be supporting, uh, will be supported by key enablers that will be deploying in the different in the different components of the architecture. Uh, and the idea, because it's something that is needed currently by the by the requirements of the new applications, is to be able to transfer intelligence closer to the edge. So we are sending power to the edge. To the edge, I know that this is not a, 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 a new concept because it has been done uh, for, for some time on in different deployment, different verticals. But right now, the idea is to provide more intelligence so the decisions are taken closer to the event. So then we will be able to reduce latency and then we will be able to reduce time of reactions in order that the utility of the, of the, of the action to, to be taken, it's, 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 it's good. So. 
the use cases that we are having that later on you will be experienced, so I will I'll go a little bit fast on this. We will have a port automation pilot that will be deployed and will be managed by France and Malta, okay, to, in order to improve efficiency, safety, and profitability of new port processes through this human centricity and through the, the, the utilization of a, of a assist IoT reference architecture. We will, mark, we will have a smart safety of workers. Uh, the pilot will be deployed in Poland. And in order to be able to predict different, different dangerous situations and hazards uh, in, in, in construction environments. And also we will have a third pilot that will be quasi vehicle monitoring and diagnostics that will be supported by a card provided by Ford and will be uh, deployed together in Germany and in Spain in order to increase monitoring capabilities of individual cars and also at fleet scale of different aspects using augmented reality in order to be able to interact with the with the with information from the car so uh, the port automation pilot will be uh, split in four scenarios that later on it will be uh, explained to you so we will have an um, automated alignment of cranes yard fleet as its location augmented reality for fleet yard drivers and also remote control of cranes uh, in the case of the smart safety of works we will have a decentralized edge architectures in order to control different aspects that will be happening to the workers in the in a construction environment and then we will try to create a safety and health plan with the support of augmented reality a smart actuation of intelligent iot devices in order to provide capability to be adapted to the individual news needs because not all the users of the system are the same this is one of the main aspects of human centricity and also as a third scenario in which we will be uh, identif identifying suspicious and in the and desirable behavior so in order to check if some worker is not fitted to continue worker in working in the place and also try to understand what is happening and if some worker needs some rest in the in the area the third pilot we will have two scenarios that will be the first one will be advanced powertrain monitoring and diagnostic and here we will be profiting from an open eco provided by ECU, provided by, by Ford in one of the cars that we uh, have at the, at the university and we will be uh, working with it and monitoring it. And the second scenario we will be using with uh, augmented reality vehicle condition monitoring in different, of, a, of an individual car or of a fleet. So uh, at the end of the day, what we are planning to do with the project is not just deploying something because we are interested in terms of uh, just research, because we, we want to create, we want to impact, we want to improve the state of the art uh, related with the project. And in order to measure the impact, we need uh, some K performance indicators, some KPIs uh, that will measure mainly six aspects. The first one is the, 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 the evolution of the human centric application of IoT, emerging new standards and pre normative activities. So it's not a matter of uh, assist IoT doing the war alone, but trying to impact in different environments so not only the people who knows what is a, a, a assist iot and work with assist iot can be affected or can be uh, let's say uh, improved their daily they, they daily work supported by these new standards so also we will try to impact in the evolution of next generation iot infrastructures mainly with semi-autonomous iot application but also trying to affect how um, the, the components of the architecture are deployed in a in a in a softwareized network uh, and try to have a link with with 5g and with all of this it's no longer the the typical business model in which i am selling a platform to a stakeholder to be deployed or that i am re renting time of use of the platform or i am being paid by the number of streams that are being received by my platform so we need to, to create disruptive business models, you know, disruptive business model related with the edge, related with mm, placing edge nodes in the different uh, stakeholders, uh, and this will be developed during the execution of the project. Of course, right now, talking about, about IoT with the, all the cases that have appeared with uh, Amazon, with different companies, with some security and privacy issues that have been appearing, uh, we uh, talking about an IoT environment without security and privacy is nonsense. So uh, we will have security and privacy, and we will be trying to impact with security and privacy all around. And uh, as I have told you, the same with the standards, we will not be able 
to do things on our own. So we will we try we will be trying to maintaining an active community of all relevant IoT stakeholders related with Assist IoT. Here we will be supported by the CSA uh, that has been funded uh, together with Assist IoT. And additionally, we will be creating this active community through two open calls in which we will be funding 15 third parties in order to cooperate with Assist IoT and uh, making profit or making use of the different developments that we are having in the project. So these are the Assist IoT partners. It's Universitat Politecnica de Valencia, Prodevelo from Spain, IB Span from Poland, Cerf from uh, Greece, Terminal Link from France, Infolysis from Greece, COPIB from Poland, Mostostal Warsaw from Poland, New Ways from the Netherlands, ICCS from, the, from Greece, Konecranes from Finland, Ford for Germany, Tutronic for Germany, S21Sec from Spain, and Orange uh, also from Poland. So these are the partners that are uh, going to make this happen. So uh, any comment that you want to, to, to make or any link that you want to have, we will be providing the, the contacts of the different entities and you have the contact of me as a project coordinator in order to get as much information as you may require. So that's it. So uh, this is the introduction of the project and we now we are going to have new presentations related with the, with the, with the main or the, or the core uh, aspects of this, of this workshop. So, Nacho, the floor is yours again. So, in order to transfer it to Ángel. Yes. Thank you very much, Carlos, for your nice presentation. You're welcome. Uh, this has been the introduction of the project as a IoT. And now, let's go to discuss the details of the pilot that have been outlined by Carlos before regarding their objectives. Currently, now I will just pass the floor to our innovation manager, which is uh, Angel Martinez from ProDevelop. Angel, which now has his camera on, um, is the innovation manager of uh, Assist IoT, um, member of the company ProDevelop, which is one key member of our consortium. Uh, he has also wide experience in research projects, holding different positions, and uh, he has uh, been assigned with the task of conducting and driving our technical advances towards useful and practical business models, particularized during the time of the project in three verticals, which are our pilot selected. Automotive, construction, and maritime ports. I will now pass the floor to him to introduce the next speakers and uh, the beginning of how we will be gathering feedback from you. Thank, Thank you, you and much. Thank you very much, Nacho. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Nacho. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos, for for such good introduction. I think that 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 you make the point. Um, as 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 Nacho said, my name is Angel Martinez. I will be uh, the innovation manager of such a challenging project. And my role, my actual role in in Prodel, the company where I work, is to create uh, products for the, let's say, the, the maritime industry. I'm the project manager of some of some very interesting projects, but I have also uh, a very good expertise working in, in research. Just to, to get right to the point, because we would like to to, um, to take advantage of your time and, and put the, the I mean, uh, and to, to, to adjust the time for, for, for the, the workshop, uh, I would like to highlight three three very important points that, that Carlos mentioned before. We are it's not a question to to develop or one of the objectives for for assist IoT is not only to to, to develop um, technology. It's true that we are in a research and innovation action, but. Uh, Carlos uh, mentioned very well, this is a human-centric driven uh, solution. We need to create something for people. The idea is also to take advantage of analyze data very close to the origin of the event in order to avoid latency, which will give us the opportunity to create amazing services and applications. And the last point that I would like to highlight uh, from the from the presentation carried out by Carlos is that we it's true that our challenge is to create something uh, which is uh, universal. I mean we do our idea is not to create something very specific for uh, several pilots or scenarios, specific domains. 
our intention is to create something very open and generic, which could uh, be implemented and deployed, uh, no matter where the scenario or your necessity is. It's also true that in order to demonstrate and validate concepts and to measure uh, uh, KPIs, we need to put the focus in something. That's why we have selected uh, three very, let's say, complicated or, 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 or very um, difficult scenarios. And that's the three scenarios of the pilot that we are going to try to, where we are going to validate the technology and the, and the, co and the context that uh, we are researching. The three scenarios, as Carlos uh, introduced before, is the port, the port of something that we call uh, port automation, which is related with the maritime industry, uh, vessel port, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Francisco Blanquer from Terminal Link uh, is going to introduce uh, better than me uh, the aims and concerns, etc. Uh, later on. Uh, from the building industry, uh, we have also uh, several concerns and topics and um, some objectives that we would like to, to demonstrate. And the last, the, the, the other one is, is for uh, automation. Um, I would like uh, to highlight also that the objective, the most important uh, objective pursued by this workshop is to have the opportunity to generate debate, to, to, to give you the opportunity to share your ideas and to provide some feedback so that we could take into account your feedback in order to construct something which really uh, makes sense. So I think that the most important of this slot is to, is to have the opportunity to hear the experts. So Francisco Blanquer, if you are ready, I would like to give you the opportunity to start introducing, introducing the, the port automation pilot. Uh, and if you want, uh, you could share your own screen. Or if, if not, I'm ready with your, your slides. It's up to you. OK, thank you, Ángel. Um, I am Francisco Lanquer, Innovation Senior Manager at Terminal Link. And I'm in charge of uh, bringing to to CMA CGM terminals, all the new technologies in uh, digitalization, energy, equipment, and, and everything what is new in our sector. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how we are going to test a CIOT in an environment that is container terminals in Malta. Well, uh, things are changing a lot in the last mm, 10 years with uh, two new technologies that are big data and Internet of Things. We are changing the way we, uh, we build our infra digital infrastructure. Not anymore is a classical network where you have uh, all the service feeding the TOS, the Terminal Operation System. But now what we are creating is a digital platform where we pass through everything. So we connect everything with everything through a digital platforms, <coughs> creating uh, what we call virtual objects. Why? <coughs> to not only give a service, but to use the data in all the aspects. And the most relevant aspect are the continuous improvement and the process automation. Regardless, if we want to have an automatic terminal, automatic equipment, or absolutely manual. We want to uh, automate the process itself, and we want to improve. In theory, this is very nice. And in fact, we have uh, a lot of technologies and a lot of pilots and a lot of uh, digital technologies in our terminals. We have uh, very sophisticated softwares. We have uh, imagine recognition to read the, uh, the container plate, the, the, the track plate, and, and a lot of things that we have implemented. We are working a lot in positioning, <clears throat> in automatic alignment, in, in, uh, in the automation of equipment to recognize the environment and to do the job. We are working with all the technologies, but Uh, and, and in fact, we have also uh, very good experience in, in big data. 
that give us a lot of complexity of interconnectivity of uh, the devices with the services and with the human. Uh, this is really complex um, because we have to join a lot of data sources to be represented uh, by the human. And now this technology is based in the cloud. Huh? So these human have the visibility of all the system but passing through the cloud. To give the visibility to this guy, we have to read really from the cloud or use the, the local device that have the machine, eh? the machine we are using. Why this is not enough or we are not happy? First, we have a clear problem of in cybersecurity. This uh, network is so complex that uh, when we want to to warranty the, the security, the cyber security, uh, is almost impossible. So uh, you have uh, the complexity is so high that the, the, the people of security is intervening everywhere and they put a lot of conditions and at the end we it takes so long that it takes longer to assegure the security of the IoT device than the IoT device itself, so the data, or to configure the IoT or to read the data from the equipment. That is very costly and time consuming. Second, it doesn't matter the technology you are using in one terminal. The environment is so hard with the vessels, the radar, the containers, all the equipment moving all the time, that the technology is never good enough. One technology, if you use 4G, is not going to work everywhere. If you use Wi-Fi, it's not going to work everywhere and always. So, Typically, we need redundancy. And in the moment that you put redundancy, again, we have a lot of complexity because you cannot configure a gateway and a one address to say, okay, send this information there. But you only have one path. And then typically, you have some redundancy in unique one technology. If you want to migrate to another technology, you have to migrate everything at once. You cannot do a progressive migration. You, you cannot run three, four technologies in parallel. Eh? Balancing the network, the, the, the redundancy. Third problem, when we go now to remote control eh, or to video, we have a problem of latency. Typically, if you want to work in real time, eh, we are talking about less than one second information that with the existing technology is not a problem but when you lose the connectivity when you have remote control then we are you are talking about 50 milliseconds well uh, how with redundancy manage the latency sometimes one network is faster than the other it depends the, where is the machine working and where, where is the vessel so it will, it's another condition to select what network is the right one. Third is the problem of the buffering. And what happens if I lose completely my connectivity? Hmm? Uh, on top of everything, we don't have standards in the port industry. Uh, now we are creating uh, that. Uh, we need, uh, we move uh, loads, we, no, we move cargo um, from one equipment to another. But those equipment have to align themselves. So to do the alignment, it could be absolutely manual. Eh? The driver is looking, okay, I'm in position, I'm not, I'm talking with the other driver. In a very close future, we, we will have autonomous equipment, autonomous trucks, autonomous cranes, remote, uh, remote uh, cranes, remote trucks, and we need to translate that uh, physical alignment that you need to move the cargo with, uh, in a digital way. Uh, again, very linked with cyber security, the double factor identification. Uh, today, basically, we don't, we don't have double factor uh, in the in the network. Uh, you have we start to have for for people, uh, but not for a machine to machine communication. What happened? We are we are a hub, so we have a lot of internal traffic and internal process, but at the same time. We, we, we receive from one side the vessels and from the other the, the trucks eh, the, or the train. And we need to connect all this technology with external devices from our organization. 
Today, almost impossible. Yeah? We don't have that technology. We, we give a ticket yeah? uh, we, and we, we check, but it's not digital connecting to that device, that track that is arriving. Um, on top of this, we have these lags and the amount of data is increasing every day. Uh, now, uh, for example, in Malta, we multiply by more than 10 the amount of data per day, yeah, just in one year. And uh, our forecast is multiplied another five times in the next two, three years. So the existing network doesn't support this. And we need to increase this network with new technologies. But how to do this in a smooth and low risk? And again, another specific problem of my industry is that the cranes last forever. So the, the cranes last 30 years, no? the tracks 10 years, the artists, the cranes in the yard 20 years. Uh, we have to upgrade the system equipment no? because this technology is new. We need a way to always keep upgrading the hardware, the cranes, the steel, eh, with the software and hardware. So we, we are going to, to demonstrate that this IC IoT technology works. We are going to do four pilots. One is the device-to-device uh, -device physical alignment through digital communication. So uh, regardless the level of automation, if human or full automatic or remote control, we are going to do machine-to-machine -machine communication to do the alignment. And that open communication, uh, open the communication, cross the data, uh, and the double factor authentication have to be done very fast in real time. Second pilot is about uh, the integration of, uh, of uh, the positioning with the data from absolute and relative, and not only the machine itself, the crane, but also all that is around the crane. So how to identify where is the container, where is the machine, but not only. Also, all the devices, entities that we have around, uh, digital and, and physical. And how to use all the data together, mm, the signal of the GPS, with the that digital data, right? the, what we call the telemetry with the positioning. So we can position everything and represent that information, uh, interface that information with the human all the time. The typical hat uh, that is telling you what to do, where to go, crossing the, the real data, the physical data, the, the reality with the digital information. <clears throat> um, one of the major problems we have with the big data is, is how to transmit this data to everybody, no, not just to the super expert that you have in the office, uh, the, the data science, but how to bring this value information to everybody, especially the, the operators, mm? uh, even in the office or in the machine. So mm, how to, as fast as possible, connect the cloud with the equipment or use the, the edge computing that we already have in the equipment itself uh, in a secure and, and fast way and, and interact with this. So for example, very usefully, way to use this technology of interconnectivity is that the driver can validate or can make comments or uh, notes over the data mm, in the screen. Say, okay, uh, this idle time is because this. Mm, very simple idea, but very powerful. And correct the data. Because it's all the time visualizing the data with the reality. So the, the value of the data will increase a lot with the enrichment of the human. Finally, remote control. The best way to test latency is with remote control. So uh, with Connect Cranes, we are going to introduce this technology in uh, at least one remote control RTG, wireless, in Malta. 
uh, to validate all the video, radio, redundancy, multi-network, huh? not only through just network, typically fluid mesh or, or technology, no. We are going to run this through several networks at the same time. So, the idea is to, to check uh, one by one that everything works mm, and what, what, how much is the improvement of all these technology in real use cases. And uh, now I have a, a few minutes to have some feedback uh, about uh, what really you think is the most important for you or what uh, is your use case that perhaps we can also test and share with you. If, if you don't mind, uh, Curro, uh, yeah. if, if you want, uh, let's give the opportunity to, to the next um, uh, speaker to introduce uh, the, the other scenario. And let's, uh, with the help of Nacho, we are uh, gathering all the questions and we will share at the end of the, of the, of the session. Of Is it okay for you? Uh, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Kuro, because I think that uh, you make it. I mean, uh, you have 10 minutes and, and you have uh, take advantage of the time uh, with a very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Kuro. So I would like to, to give the opportunity to Pior from Mostostal to introduce. Uh, okay, we are we are still uh, you are still sharing the, the screen. Okay. Uh, Pio from Ostastal, are you ready and do you want to share your screen or do you prefer that I share mine? Uh, I can share my screen. Good, thank you very much. So the floor is yours. Uh, if you could uh, uh, take advantage of the next 10 minutes or even less if it's possible, uh, we will really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Fiat. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Piotr and I work for construction company in um, uh, Poland. Uh, today I present uh, uh, another use case uh, in um, uh, our uh, project which is related to the construction sector. So um, I would like to start with um, uh, difficulties that we uh, have on a construction site. Uh, first of all, it's a very risky environment uh, where um, dangerous uh, places change uh, daily. And this is um, uh, very uh, risky uh, for us. Another thing is that um, uh, general uh, construction companies um, uh, cooperate with uh, a lot of uh, subcontractors and a lot of uh, employees that uh, uh, changing um, every day. Um, so uh, it's very uh, challenging for us to uh, control um, that um, each uh, construction um, a worker has actual medical test and all uh, and all uh, permits, and um, they can enter to the specific uh, dangerous uh, zone. Uh, on a, a big uh, construction site, it's very uh, challenging to monitor uh, hazards. Um, uh, situations. Uh, what is the uh, current uh, status? Um, of course, um, uh, a lot of construction companies use uh, specific platforms to control access to the construction sites. Sometimes um, uh, we uh, give uh, uh, specific uh, tags or um, which are permissions uh, to, for uh, construction workers to enter to the construction sites um, and we give uh, these uh, this, this tags uh, after pass uh, some uh, safe and healthy trainings. Uh, there are also specific platforms that can um, uh, 
identi uh, locate uh, construction um, uh, workers uh, using um, uh, specific uh, using a specific uh, uh, active uh, tax and this is very challenging because uh, as I said at the beginning um, the construction site is a, an environment that is um, changing every day uh, and uh, another question is um, uh, that you have to uh, use a specific uh, technology that um, can send the data in such a difficult uh, situation, um, environment like construction site where you have a lot of humidity, a lot of equipment that can provoke uh, problems in uh, data transmission. And uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, the current market, we don't have uh, um, solutions that could um, uh, respond to all our needs. Uh, and uh, what will be the what will be the scenarios in the, um, our uh, projects? Um, first of all, uh, we would like to um, increase the, uh, safety uh, to. Uh, control uh, access to the restricted, restricted zones. It means that not all workers uh, can uh, enter to the roof uh, or without, um, uh, without uh, specific uh, permissions. Um, you cannot enter to the specific, uh, specific zones. So we would like to control it in, in an automatically way. And um, uh, another thing is that uh, we noticed that uh, augmented uh, reality um, ha from day to day is more popular. So uh, we would like to uh, implement virtual uh, glasses to uh, indicate uh, dangerous zones for our uh, workers, or to send them uh, uh, notifications uh, about um, uh, nearby hazards or uh, dangerous uh, situation, or to send them information about what is the faster route to leave a construction uh, site. Uh, Another thing is um, um, monitoring uh, the health uh, of uh, our construction workers uh, using um, uh, IoT uh, devices. Uh, so we are thinking to uh, implement uh, variables, um, s some variable solutions uh, to monitor um, um, the temperature uh, or um, the conditions in which workers uh, uh, work. Mm. One of the most uh, challenging uh, scenarios um, is uh, to uh, monitor um, and detect um, uh, fall from heights uh, or immobility de detection. And this is very important because um, um, these uh, IoT devices should send as soon as possible notification to the person responsible for the uh, safety on the construction site that something has happened uh, and um, this person should uh, um, call for emergency and uh, provide uh, help uh, to, to the specific work workers in a specific places. Uh, this is very important, uh, specifically in um, um, very big construction sites where um, sometimes um, 
work I can wait, I spend a lot of time waiting for the help um, and can, cannot be uh, noticed for anyone. And um, the last one, uh, interaction um, is uh, control, um, to, to have a control uh, to the, of entrance uh, to the construction sites. Uh, and interactions of workers between uh, machineries, specifically with uh, cranes and um, vehicles. Um, this um, uh, this um, uh, the solutions uh, should be um, uh, somehow um, uh, in, in inter in, in connect um, with um, a BIM model uh, because uh, building information modeling is the future of the um, digitalization in the construction uh, sector and um, uh, in BIM models uh, we insert a lot of information also about the dangerous zone in the specific time of the construction works and of course uh, we um, and another challenge is to um, uh, connect our IoT uh, device devices with a 5G uh, network which step by step is entering um, to our markets in each countries. We the, the demonstration uh, case that we selected um, for in this project is um, uh, Marshall office in Szczecin. And this is the um, uh, city located in northwest of Poland. Um, you can on the screen you can see two buildings. One uh, is uh, under renovation, and uh, second one uh, will be uh, is is a completely new uh, building. And here we can see some um, scans and photos from the, our construction sites. And uh, as I mentioned, um, these are uh, beam uh, models that uh, we would like to uh, connect with uh, IoT platform. And these are partners involved in uh, this task. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Piotr, for, for, for your presentation. If you don't mind, we are going to follow the same strategy that the one agreed with, with Francisco, with Curro. Let's uh, give the opportunity to the audience to prepare some questions and we will review uh, later on. So, since we are over the time, apologize for, for that. Uh, really sorry. Uh, Daniel or Klaus from Ford, do you want to share? Uh, I can help. One yes. sorry. sorry for interrupting you. I was just uh, wanted to uh, remind all attendees that uh, you could use the raise hand uh, functionality of Teams for just your questions later or just typing through the chat the questions you are addressing to as some some colleagues have already done. Sorry and thank you. Go ahead. No, no, no worries. Uh, Daniel, if you don't mind, since we are over the time and I know that you are a very tight agenda, uh, is it possible for you just to uh, put the focus and in two or three minutes uh, get right to the point about the your scenario because I think that is very important to and challenging and it's a, a very well appreciated for the audience. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I will try to do my best. Can you hear me okay and see the slides, yeah? Not yet, not yet. At least from here I cannot see your screen yet. We can hear you but not seeing your screen. Exactly, thank here. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. If you want, Daniel, I can share my own screen and you can just present the slides. If you are not able to manage yeah, um, to share yours. Sharing it again, it should should come okay. up. Now, now. Now we can see your screen. Now it's okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, some very brief introductory uh, words on um, the role of connectivity in the automotive world. Um, of course, it's, it's a large field and we have many in-vehicle domains 
which are making use of connectivity already today. Um, typical use cases are in the field of infotainment or driver assist functions. Um, of course, we are not yet at aut autonomous uh, driving and production or in large uh, main mainstream uh, scale kind of use. But uh, level two and three driver assist functions are already using uh, connectivity and there are like use cases with, uh, you know, car to, to device, car to infrastructure, th things like that. Um, the, the use case we are going to um, focus on is more like vehicle to network and that is um, still kind of a new situation, uh, actually, especially in the, in the domain of propulsion system controls. So I will skip that one for the sake of uh, um, time. Um, just to, to basically foster what Francisco already uh, brought up, um, the, the reason isn't necessarily the reason, or for, the reason for us joining the scene rather late uh, is not necessarily that we have been sleeping over a trend. It's more like really hard limitations like um, network coverage, but also um, bandwidth issues and, and latency, latency issues. So all that is, is improving big time with, with 4G and ultimately also 5G. But even with that, um, still cybersecurity, um, if, if it's a struggle in the, in the field of cranes, as uh, Francisco said, it's even more of a struggle in, in, in the field of, of a car. So I think everybody can easily come up with all sorts of of uh, situations where um, basically a hacked vehicle uh, could could be a real threat. It's not only that, also of course functional safety requirements um, in the context of connected features um, uh, can be extremely challenging. So um, irrespective of all that, there are already some use cases uh, existing. So over the years, software updates um, are now coming left and right. Um, and some um, of the newer uh, um, uh, joints of, of the market, like uh, electric vehicles, uh, th things like that, we, we already see um, widely spread over the air software update uh, capabilities. There's also in the commercial vehicle sector, connected service di diagnostics uh, already coming up. Things like electronic horizon, uh, which has been developed for drive assist functions, but also other functions like range prediction, of course, in the context of connected vehicles, um, get more and more opportunities and are already, uh, or we already f uh, find first uh, applications in the market. So um, now the paradigm changes that we see is that um, the legislator who is trying to come up with, uh, with a new legislation for 2025, 2026 plus for the mobility sector is really to, um, uh, really intends to leverage or probably even mandate connected monitoring functionalities and uh, some, some no pro known proposals are already on the table, like for instance, we are talking onboard monitoring as a partial replacement for OBD, uh, onboard diagnostics as we used to know it in, in the past. So what Ford is going to do is, this is just a high level chart here in, in, in a nutshell and we'll be closely cooperating uh, with, uh, with UPV and also with Tutronix on, on that we are really trying to use the enablers of uh, a connected architecture, cloud edge ar architecture in that context, aiming to generate real world data with um, different vehicle con configurations in, in order to get really a better handle on, on outlayers and non-intended behavior, aging phenomena and, and, and things like, like that. And, and that's really in a, in a nutshell what uh, what we want to do. I I'm aware of of the time and uh, of course wanted to uh, lay this out in in a little more detailed manner. But uh, I'm I'm aware it's already 11 o'clock. So Angel, back to you. Thank you very much, Daniel. No no uh, uh, no worries at all. I mean uh, the, the agenda is is, is what we um, prepare. Uh, so thank you very much for for making uh, this in in even though uh, brief but very interesting. I think that the the the, um, the idea is 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 clear. 
our intention is to try to put uh, technology that we are going to, to not only the technology, but also the concepts, architecture, paradigms, and so on that we are going to, to research during the project, try to materialize in some specific and, and challenging scenarios, the port automotive one, the, the building construction, and the automotive, as you mentioned. So I think that uh, it's clear. Uh, thank you very much for our speaker for, for making it possible. And now I, I would like to give the opportunity to the rest of the forum uh, to provide feedback or to ask uh, whatever they want, because uh, we have the experts here in order to provide some replies. So if you have any questions, as Nacho mentioned, maybe in order to sort them, please raise your hand. I know that uh, some of you have uh, put some of them in the chat. So, um, Nacho, do you do you mind to to start because I have a little bit lost about the order? Uh, do you mind to to start uh, circulating the questions we have? If yes, yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Angel, for your uh, for the guiding this this presentation for the speakers, and of course, thank you, the speakers from the three use cases, to be such uh, concise and precise uh, on the on the presentations. I will proceed with uh, the questions that have been typed uh, through the chat because at this point no no hands have been raised yet. So uh, I will uh, let you doing, uh, do so during these minutes. The first question has come from uh, Eduardo Garro. Uh, I will he give him the opportunity to make the question out loud if he wants. Otherwise, I, I will be reading it through the chat. Eduardo, may you intervene? Hello, uh, Matthew. Um, well, it was more like two consecutive questions and was regarding the <coughs> lack of reliability for wireless networking in terminals, but it can also be applied to to the automotive uh, pilot. And is that uh, as Francisco and, and Daniel, I think, uh, explained, uh, the, there is the need to, to cover very challenging scenarios which cannot be initially uh, affordable with current uh, network technologies. But I was wondering if they have in mind that possibly, according to what uh, the standard said about 5G, and thanks to the network slicing capabilities, they can, uh, just by using a single infrastructure, which will help for the management, uh, deploy several network uh, configurations that can address reliabilities in some areas of the terminal, another can be like uh, massive coverage for uh, asset monitoring and other for, I don't know, broadband with media streaming. Uh, hello, Eduardo. Well, <coughs> uh, this is more strategic than the technology itself. Uh, in the future, will appear a fantastic technology that will resolve this problem? Yes, for sure. It's a matter of time eh, that the 5G or 6G or 7G resolve all the problem and we need any more another network. But the reality today is it doesn't matter the technology you are using, uh, it's never perfect. And at the end, uh, you have to change your technology every five or 10 years. And you cannot uh, change, you cannot say, okay, uh, tomorrow we jump to 4G, everything. And then next day we jump to 5G, everything, because it's so expensive. And it's not, it's not reliable that you cannot do that. At the end, you have to work with, uh, or we need to work with uh, two or three technologies simultaneously at the same time, doing the migration. One technology will be very much better for latency than others that are for free, uh, but very expensive. For example, today we have technology with very low latency to do remote control. It's very expensive. So to use that for everything, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and, and you have one device, one crane, that some data should go through Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter um, through buffer because the speed is not the important at all. And the other, you need super redundancy because it's the, the remote control. And the other have to be low latency because it's the video. How to manage that? If you don't have a free, eh, very cheap technology able to do everything well. We need something that we can configure, create our recipe, our formula, to decide it how, in the best possible way, we can share the data, transmit the data, and use the network. 
and uh, reliable and redundancy. So, uh, I'm not discussing about the future of 5G, uh, but uh, in my case, 5G will be used in a very specific, uh, in my recipe, very specific uh, value. Uh, here, I need 5G. For the rest, no. How to configure that? We don't have a tool to do that. It's impossible today. Or now that 5G is not working, I go through Wi-Fi. We, we cannot do that. Okay, thanks. It, it's flexibility, what we need. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that is what like the uh, these, like the 5G vendors say about 5G, but uh, yeah, they, they are vendors at the end. Then at the end, you have to pay for that, and that technology yeah. is not ready. And what is the cost? Mm. And the internet Wi-Fi is for free. Why you have to pay a fortune for something that they have for free? Well, yeah. So to me, the future is buy the service and probably three service at the same time and use the best one. It depends the, the, the requirements you have in that second for that data. But we need to manage that. How to do that? As is IoT. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco, for your, your clarity in the answer. It's, it's, it's very good. And I believe, actually, I believe this, this would be the case for other maritime ports, actually. Actually, it, it, for all the maritime ports, if, if what you are saying it's applicable to, to the other cases. So I would like to take this opportunity to, to ask uh, the audience in case uh, we would have any expert or any people involved in the maritime transport sector as well. Uh, in case you have experienced similar problems like uh, Francisco has explained, or have felt that the same gaps are still to cover in the use in the in the state of the art, or if you had any other ideas or any other comments about the perspective uh, we have just shown in the maritime transport sector. Is there, there anyone interested to, to comment over this? Um, in that case, uh, I would like to just um, let you, give you some minutes to reflect about the words from Francisco in case some, some uh, interventions and some interested reflections come up. And I will advance to the next question that have been typed in the chat. Uh, which was from uh, Cesar Lopez. Uh, it goes, it's addressed actually for Piotr for the case of the construction buildings. And it goes like, like this. Um, and, I don't know, Cesar, do you want to intervene, make it yourself, or should I read it as you prefer? Yes, hi everyone. Uh, I heard at the presentation about the, uh, the use of augmented reality devices. So my question, uh, for this second pilot is, uh, are they going to, to be used commercial devices and are they identified or uh, will them be developed specifically for this project? Thank you. Uh, so if I uh, may I answer to this question is, uh, we will use uh, commercial devices because the goal of the project is not to develop uh, another augmented reality glasses uh, because there already existed uh, some um, these kind of solutions and the challenge will be to integrate it with IoT platform and information that we would like to send to the workers using this technology. Uh, for the port, the use case is exactly the same. We are going to use commercial, commercial one. It's not our focus to create a new interface for ports. Good. Thank you, Peter and, and Francisco. I, I would have a, a, another question, actually, uh, for you, Peter, on that case. Uh, which is exactly the meaning, uh, thinking about the operator being in the building construction site, which is exactly the use you are planning to do with these augmented reality tools? And which exactly is the device you are thinking of? Are you, for example, thinking on smart glasses for detecting defects, 
application for the smartphones, but what's exactly the thing you have in mind for the actionable uh, tool that could be seen and understanding from a public uh, perspective, let's say, and uh, how are you pl plan planning to train the operators to use it? Mm, uh, uh, generally, the, um, uh, um, we are uh, we are planning to we would like to use the augmented uh, reality glasses to uh, send notification about the uh, um, dangerous zones uh, to the workers, uh, or in risky situation they could um, um, uh, receive information about the escape routes. Um, and uh, we can think about it to integrate it with somehow information from the um, uh, beam models. Normally, uh, this kind of information about the buildings and beam models are um, uh, uh, presented using mobile phones or, or tablets, but we can check also if it would be useful and comfortable for the workers to see it uh, using these glasses. But information about the equipment and which kind of solutions uh, um, we still don't know because it's too early, so we didn't have identified. Yeah, of course, understandable that this is a, the topic of the investigation and, and the research during the whole three years, but just for knowing which were uh, your perspective. Thank you very much, Piotr, for that. Um, do we have any, any other uh, agent uh, within the, the audience that has experience in the building sector or similar sectors? Uh, that would be uh, tackling also the augmented reality incorporation in IoT scenarios that would like to intervene, comment upon that, uh, ask Piotr anything, uh, now that, that's the time. If not, I, I will come back to you later in case any other question would be raised. I will advance uh, through the chat because another question has been made by Rafael. Um, address to, uh, well, Daniel, or I don't know if Klaus is here, or someone from the um, automotive case, uh, that goes like, uh, well, Rafa, do you want to, to step to step in and make it, or should I read it, as you want? Well, the, the question was, um, how close are the uh, onboard uh, electric units uh, in the cars, uh, technologically sp speaking? And whether if they can be updated on the fly uh, from the automotive company center, or if once the car has been delivered to, to a final user, uh, it's, uh, let's say, an accessible box. Uh, how have you, which is, which is normally uh, the challenges there uh, on this, uh, electric unit on board of the cart. I'm not sure if, if Daniel is still in the meeting, so um, I will try to answer. I believe Daniel has, uh, has already left. He had another commitment, so if you are so kind. Okay. Um, so, so um, it's 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 a constant growing thing. Um, of course, um, it's it's the the future to to make sure that uh, everything can be updated from software perspective um, after the the vehicle has been delivered. So that that's the the process we are currently in. Um, it's first of all a matter of of updating simple simple parameters, but of course it's also a desire to make sure that the whole software as, as, as it is, as it being delivered, is completely flexible uh, from um, security perspective, of course, make sure that, that if failures are found, these are being um, fixed immediately, but also from um, um, the perspective of usability, that, that uh, we, can, we can update um, functions in the field if the uh, customer demands it. So that, that's a, the progress we are looking to. Good. Good. Understood. Thank you very much, uh, Klaus. Uh, does anyone have uh, another question for both uh, 
Turning a link or uh, most to tell or forward about what has been commented. Uh, does anyone have any question about the technology to be employed, about the the project coordinator's presentation as well? Uh, please feel free to do it. Uh, we are here to respond. No, good. Um, anyways, what, what we will do uh, at, um, at immediately will be the following. Uh, we have gathered your uh, emails through the registration form, for which we are uh, very glad for of. Uh, we will use those emails, if, if it's that no problem for you, to send you all the material that has been presented, all the presentations uh, presented by the project coordinator and all the pre uh, pilot related material. I uh, we will use those emails for sending you the, the slides and also referring you to, to our website with the different content you could review to, to uh, inform more about what Assist IoT is about. And we will open um, the, that very um, email sending for your feedback in case you would like to reflect about what has been told today and you would like to come back with any other questions. Uh, with uh, with uh, nothing else, I would like to thank very much the press, the speakers that have presented the use cases and the, the market perspective. And I will pass the floor now again to our innovation manager for il illustrating you on how you could contribute additionally for for the feedback upon this market. Thank you, and uh, please. Uh, thank you very much. Ask. Nacho, uh, can you see, uh, still, uh, see my screen, right? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Just just a few words uh, um, in order to close, or before closing, giving you the, the floor back, and Nacho, to, to wrap up this decision. Just to give you the opportunity to the audience, but because uh, as, as Carlos mentioned at the very beginning, we are in the early stage of the of the project where we are gathering and trying to better understand which are the real needs of, of the industry or the academia or which are the, the most important problems that we will have to face during the project. Of course, we have on board very good experts on, on, on some specific verticals, but it's very nice to, to have the opportunity to share our learnings or insights with you. That's what we have set up an online survey, which is open or will be open for the next two weeks uh, since today onwards. And the idea is very simple. It's a, it's a very fast online survey where we are asking you which are your main important concerns or according to you, which are the most uh, challenging things that needs to be faced in such kind of projects. The idea what we are trying to or what we bear in mind is to uh, once the, the online survey will be closed in two weeks, as I mentioned before, the idea is we will wrap up all the content. We prepare a good looking, let's say, uh, material and we will make it public so that all the industry and of course you as attendants of this workshop uh, could take advantage of such material. Uh, it makes not sense as uh, to, to let's say uh, to mem try to memorize this long uh, uh, link. We are uh, circulating all the information. You will be see in our social media channels uh, all the information, a very simple link. And I would really appreciate if you could invest uh, two or three minutes in order to fill in the survey because to to have your uh, your your feedback is more than appreciated and, and is really uh, helpful for us in order to conduct and guide a, a very successful project. So anything else from my side, Nacho, I would like to, to appreciate a lot uh, the participation of previous speak, uh, speakers, which are experts on their domains. And Nacho, if you don't mind, I will give you to, back to you the, the floor in order to wrap up this session. Uh, thank you very much for 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 making it possible. Thank you very much, Angel, and thank you, everyone. Nothing else from our side. As a wrap up, I would say that uh, we are proposing kind of uh, disrupting technologies, trying to cover some gaps and to have them usable and actionable in quite a short uh, short time, because the project will last just three years. So we are aiming at developing, a, say, a blueprint architecture, thinking on 
how it can be applied for covering the problems and issues the experts have today just presented and making also scalable for uh, other verticals, actually generic for, for covering the needs that, that the next generation Internet of Things will, uh, will entail regarding velocity of data, uh, bandwidth limitations, quantity of data, and so on. So uh, I would like to kindly encourage you all to participate in our debates because we believe that can be enrichable and enrichable for both you and us. And uh, who knows, probably they could even guide us in our implementations. So I would like to thank all the attendees for being here. Uh, this hour and a half we have spent today. And uh, we will be sending you the materials we have used today. Also, I has shared the link of the survey, which we kindly ask you to fulfill during the, the next uh, fortnight. And uh, with nothing else, thank you for attending and see you in the next Assist IoT webinar workshop. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice week. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, everybody.